so you've got yourself a new Globe e-bike. We're here to help you build it. You'll have your ST up and running in just eight short minutes. Let's make sure the box isn't damaged before we open it up. We want to keep the box upright. As we begin, we're going to make sure the bike and all of its parts are pristine. So look out for any shipping damage. Let's rotate the six plastic locks counterclockwise to remove them. If anything appears to be damaged, please contact Rider Care for support. Assembly requires basic mechanical skills and quality tools. It is critical that you use a high quality torque wrench to make sure the bolts are tight in the spec. Bolts that are either too loose or too tight may compromise the safety of the assembly. Before we get started, please take note of the QR code on the top of the box. It'll take you to the assembly guide and other important support resources if you need them. Let's use the side handles to lift the box up and off the inner packaging. This base will be our work stand for the rest of the assembly. Pro tip, we recommend you keep the box and other packaging materials just in case you need to rebox the bike for a move or any other future transportation needs. The small parts box is on top of the rear tower where it says start here. The recess underneath this box is ideal for storing your tools and small parts as you move along with the build. Inside the box, you'll find large and small torque wrenches and six different torque wrench bits. You won't need to get bicycle grease or anything. All the necessary bike components come pre-greased. Also, you'll see the pedals, spare rear derailleur hanger, bell and reflectors, plus the key to detach your battery. You'll also find the assembly guide and user manual, the bicycle owner's manual, and the Globe ST Zine here. You'll want to follow along with the assembly guide and thoroughly read the owner's manual which has important safety information for you to review carefully before your first ride. Please keep in mind that this video is also a visual guide to supplement those documents. Your bike came with two torque wrenches. The small wrench ranges from three to 10 Newton meters. The large one ranges from 10 to 20 Newton meters. Additionally, you'll need a few other tools. These include a bicycle floor pump with a pressure gauge and a Phillips head screwdriver. If you've never used a torque wrench before, please read the detailed instructions in the assembly guide. We'll also show you how to use it once we begin tightening the bolts. Let's install the stem first. Unlock the tabs by pulling these out and removing the front tower cap. You'll find the handlebar cap under that. Lift it off. Now remove the packaging brace near the center of the bike, as well as the packing block underneath it. This will give you access to the stem assembly and the large multi-head 15 and 17 millimeter wrench. Remove it from the center tower and set it aside. You'll use this later on. Now pull out the stem and get your six millimeter hex bit for the bolt that's under the plastic cap. Please note that the identifying markings on the bits are small. You'll wanna buddy up the six millimeter hex and the large torque wrench so you can loosen the quill, which is part of the stem with the height indicators. Both the outside of the stem and the inside of the head tube come pre-greased. But the stem's face plate facing forward Slide the stem into the head tube. Be sure to hide the minimum insert line inside the head tube. If you're on the shorter side, slide the stem in even further. And if you're tall, you'll wanna leave the stem up higher. Now we'll use the large torque wrench to tighten the stem bolt to 20 Newton meters. With the six millimeter hex bit installed, we'll insert the wrench into the bolt head. Turn the lever arm clockwise until you feel resistance and the lever arm starts to flex. Also, be mindful of holding the lever arm on the grip area. Be careful not to hold too high up on the lever and avoid contacting the numerical gauge. Doing so can give the wrong value when tightening the bolt. As the lever flexes, keep tightening the bolt until the pointer indicates 20 Newton meters. Once you're done, remember to put the plastic cap on. We're halfway there. Now we'll move on to the handlebar, which means we're removing the last block of the packaging from the center tower. Grab the small torque wrench with the six millimeter hex bit. We're using this to loosen and remove the bolts from the stem's face plate. This next part needs a bit more focus. Keep the bolts, washers, and face plate in the tray underneath the small parts box. Now lift the handlebar from the front tower tray and slide it out of the center tower. Place it in the open stem with the brake levers facing forward. Place the face plate over the handlebar and align the holes. Make sure each bolt still has its washer and then thread them back into the stem by hand. With the small torque wrench, Lightly tighten the bolts until the upper and lower gaps are about the same. Position the lines evenly on each side of the stem in order to align it with the handlebar. Then rotate the bar to align it with the angle of the head tube. 
Now use a small torque wrench to finish tightening the bolts in an alternating cross pattern, like so. The bolt should be tightened to 10 newton meters. We're going to unpack the bike next so you can finally remove the center tower. Unlock the tab on the front tower and then slide the tower and the wheel brace off. Now let's go back to the rear tower and unlock these tabs at the top. Remove the small parts box tray as well as these tower caps. Unlock the bottom tabs and remove the lower rear insert from the tower by pulling up from the back of the insert. Hold the rear tower and roll it forward to release it from the packaging. Okay, now hold the bike up and use your foot to lower the kickstand. Hold the handlebar and roll it back so the kickstand swivels under the bike to fully support the frame. Be careful to keep your foot on it so it doesn't slide backward. While the kickstand is strong enough to support the weight of the bike and its cargo, please note that it's not intended to hold up an adult. Now we're moving on to the pedals. They're labeled R and L and are threaded differently for each side of the bike. The right side of the bike is called the drive side with the chain, chain ring, and rear derailleur. Take the pedals and locate the R and L on each, R for the right and L for the left. Thread the right pedal axle into the crank arm of the right side. Be mindful to hold and turn the pedal axle, not just the pedal body. Turn the axle towards the front of the bike clockwise, turn it in as far as you can by hand first, then use the 15 millimeter flat wrench to finish tightening. Heads up, pedals should be tight. You'll feel some resistance as you complete turning the wrench. That's normal. Remember, the left pedal is reverse threaded. Thread it into the crank arm of the left. Again, we want to turn the axle towards the front of the bike counterclockwise this time. Finish tightening with the 15 millimeter flat wrench. Next, we're gonna pump up the tires. Use the floor pump to inflate the tires to your preferred PSI. Read the pressure range printed on the side of the tire and be careful to meet the minimum and not exceed the maximum PSI. Your ideal PSI will depend on your size, cargo, and riding conditions. If you add more weight to the bike, simply increase your PSI. For more info on getting the tire pressure right for a comfy ride, check out the zine. There are some great tips on those pages about the Carlos Whisper tires. Now let's grab the reflectors. The white reflector goes on the front and the red on the rear. Wrap the white reflector bar clamp around the handlebar, tightening the bolt with the Phillips head screwdriver. Likewise, wrap the clamp of the red reflector around the seat post and tighten it. You'll wrap the bell clamp around the bar, keeping it close to the hand you'll use to bring it. Tighten it with a two and a half millimeter hex inserted into the small torque wrench. Okay, moment of truth. If you tried to power up the bike but it didn't turn on, it's because it needs to be plugged into the charger to activate the system. To get going on your first ride and learn a few more tips, check out the Your First Ride video on the Globe YouTube playlist. And if you wanna learn more about your new Globe Paw ST, you won't wanna miss the getting the most out of your ride video.